Welcome to the SJ Child Show, where a little bit of knowledge can turn fear into understanding. Enjoy the show. Hi, and thank you so much for joining the SJ Child Show today. I am so excited. I was joking with her a little bit ahead before that she's, you know, we're talking to Miss Melanie today in the future. Uh, she's uh, ahead of us in Australia. And it's so neat to be able to meet all around the world in this easy face to face environment. Um, and it makes it so, oh, there goes my camera, so intimate and, and comfortable except for when I disappear, right? <laughs> sorry about that. We're so sorry if we have some te technical difficulties, I'll try to just, you know, roll along with it and we'll just put some exciting pictures up if my camera goes out anywhere. So anyhow, without further ado, thank you so much for being here today, Melanie. Thank you, SJ. It's really lovely to um, be speaking with you today. It's such a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, I'm honored to have you here and excited to hear your story and see what it's all about. So please just introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, I'm Melanie Nataris. I live in Sydney, Australia. Um, that's why I'm, I'm calling from the future and <laughs> <laughs> because we're ahead of your time's, um, uh, time zone. Um, so I'm a mom of three kids and um, they're in high school now, actually. And one's just finished and off to university next month. But um, when they were little and in primary school, I was very actively involved in uh, the PNC, which is uh, what we call your PTA. And um, so I'm very, I've always been a keen reader and a keen writer. And uh, one day, and, and yeah, one of my, my eldest child, he has food allergies. Um, so uh, the usual ways that we um, connect with others in culture is often through food, mm -hmm. and this is like a really, really dangerous thing for people with food allergies. So um, it's it, it, back when he was diagnosed, which was um, 16 years ago now, mm -hmm. um, there was less awareness around it. I mean, people kind of knew, like I kind of knew about it when he got it, but not really. And um, so he was two at the time. Wow. And um, it's, you know, it's, it's really um, uh, like I, I feel anxious just talking about it now, but it's, it's quite anxiety producing when like the doctor yeah. says, you know, you can't have any trace of his allergen or he could die. And you take that really, really seriously. And um, unfortunately, like a lot of the rest of the world doesn't. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, you have to like mama bear up a bit and and go and be proactive um to defend your child to teach him you know the right way to look after himself mm. and um you know teach different ways of connecting when one of the main social tools like isn't there anymore you know and um it's it's another one of those invisible diseases that um you know people don't recognize and i mean he's, he's quite lucky in a lot of ways that you know he can do most things it's just like as a little child when um you're going to a birthday party and you see like literally we went to one and they must have bought like every single sweet in Sydney. <laughs> it was just this wall of lollies and he could not have any of them oh. <laughs> and cupcakes and sweets or, or you know a school event like we have you know you know cake days and yeah. and um uh, one, once his teacher did, um, you know, food-based science experiments, you know, you do change of state where you show chocolate melting and then, you know, he, he has to, you know, stand up and say, I can't be near this and I can't wash up that. And, um, yeah, yeah, then, I mean, he's been great. Like it was really hard for him in primary school because all he wanted to do was to be like everyone else. Yeah. Um, then when, as he got older, he just kind of been all cool and like, I don't care. And mm -hmm. he would just cope with, with things, but, um, wow. he would have like, um, people's food wrappers thrown into his lunchbox. And so he couldn't eat lunch. He once had a kid, um, like come up to him and 
we don't know whether this was like a kind of dumb way of like warning him or whether he meant it as a threat, but he came up to him with a peanut butter, peanuts, peanuts are allergen, peanut butter sandwich in class and said, you know, you better be careful because I've got this. And <laughs> it's like holding, you know, a gun or a knife yeah. to someone with, you know, so he was, he was cool. Like he just, he just left. He just walked out of the classroom and this is how he, you know, learned to speak up to other people. and. um and, you know, his peers, his teachers and look after himself. But um, it's quite like a difficult thing. So um, I have other kids and I have other parts of my life, but this has been like a big forming experience because um, you lose relationships, you know, through this. Um, uh, like many other families, you know, it's can be pretty hard for the grandparents to, you know, not get offended about it all. And, um, yeah, my ex-husband was not like very careful with that. And yeah. other people's like friends, like the, the, the parents of his friends, we only had, um, two safe families where we could go and have meals with, and they were so fantastic. They were just put all the packets of all the food out for me and I would read every label and they'd say, go Mel, go do it. You know, here it is. And if I missed, if we found something was missing, they just pull that box out of the trash can and I would read that. So, but only two, you know, out yeah. of all the people. So um, my, my, one of my missions in life now <laughs> is to provide like a, a different kind of fundraising alternative for um, primary or elementary schools, which is not food based, which mm. is also not um, like plastic based because, you know, climate change Earth, and, yeah. this, <laughs> yeah. and um, you know, something that like is, is inclusive and accessible to everyone and um, facilitates like the, the primary goal of school, which is to read. You know, because without reading, we, we can't do anything. It, you know, we can't even do maths, really. <laughs> once you once you go past the very simple maths, you know, one plus one, you need to do uh, word comprehension and figure out. Like, they're tricky questions. you got to understand and figure it out. So um, I've written a book and um it's it's for schools it's a um it's an adventure game book like the old choose your own adventure novels if if i grew up with those back in the 80s so yeah. um there it's like that but i've written a story that's um about an art show that comes to life at your school and four of the teacher four of the characters are um four real teacher names of your school and it has uh, loads of school details like your uniform color and um bell times and local things around your school so it's there because everyone is at school to learn to read and um it includes everyone no one's in danger you know if um someone's not mobile you know they and they can't be in a walkathon they can still read a book yeah and it's a shared event you know everyone reads the same story and it helps build I, I'm, I'm hoping it can help mm -hmm. to build community with the shared yeah. event because we um you know, a strong community is uh, leads to better educational outcomes. It makes people uh, more resilient. They have um, more access to people uh, across different areas of their life. So if they're feeling more comfortable as a community, so, you know, a young kid can ask an older kid or can ask a teacher because they're equally comfortable with the whole part of the community. So um, that's kind of my mission. Oh, um, and... Yeah, and I just want to get everybody reading books because I love books. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I agree. Uh, I've authored seven myself, so I completely understand the love of, of books and reading. And in fact, I just um, had a gentleman, a few, couple, maybe even last week that same thing, avid, like a reader program and everything it was wonderful. And he said, I told him, I still have some books that I I haven't finished, you know, that I'm still have it. And he says, you owe it to the universe to get those <laughs> out there. And so I said, I'll take you up on that challenge. I'll take you up on it. Um, and they're really cute little books about, I write about special needs, about autism, mm -hmm. dyslexia, um, anxiety, and some other, you know, things that affect us that little kids don't understand when their bodies are going through anxious feelings, what they mm. might be going through. So I love to be able to have kids identify those things too. And 
that's what brings us authors together is our shared love of, of the, you know, f- that information and that uh, imagination that it brings and that creativity, it just opens up so many parts of our ourselves in, in books. And also your message is done in a safe way that's enjoyable, that's, um, you know, creative, that's, you know, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to read, um, to, to get messages that are really important across in a reading context. And while the child is reading, they're also getting a little bit more upskilled in the literacy, which will enable them to explore other texts in the same, you know, type of material if they yeah. want, you know, so it's all, it's all positive. <laughs> it's oh, all good. I agree. I love that. And I see a couple of the copies in your background there. Do you have one up close <laughs> you could show us? Oh yeah. Just grab one. Thank you. Yes. So, that's it. And in the real, uh, so I custom make them for the schools oh, and um, the actual that. name goes there. And I don't know if you can see that on the side. Oh, hi. <laughs> this is my buddy, DJ. <laughs> Did you? This is my new friend. Her name is Melanie. Let's just forget friends. Say hello, Melanie. <laughs> hello. Okay, now go on out. My mom has a podcast. Okay. Let's just forget friends. Yep, Dad will be here to help you soon. Shut my door, honey. Thank you. Oh, and there goes my screen. Right, <laughs> perfect timing. <laughs> Sorry about that. Bless his no heart. worries. It's lovely. Yeah, it's DJ lovely. is a uh, semi-verbal autistic, mm-hmm. and he, um, yeah, has some needs that he has to just come in and get it over yeah. with sometimes. So oh, that's kids. It's a great normalizing <laughs> experience for everyone to see that you know this is it. Sometimes we don't raise our kids at the same rate our parents from the 1950s did right we're like we allow our kids to come in and talk to us and it's okay that they interrupt because you know autism the podcasts don't stop autism from happening folks <laughs> so <laughs> yeah there's why do, yeah, why, why do we have these false limitations anyway? Like the parents, like we're parents and, and yeah. parenting doesn't stop. It's 24 seven. Like I, my kids aren't coming in because they're teenagers and they're still asleep. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is exactly. uh, out, but the others are sleeping until I'm well, like, you know, a while. Right? Exactly. Yeah. No, I, and I think it's fantastic that we really, and like you said, when you were, when your, you know, son was younger and you had to come to bat for him. And I remember mm-hmm. so many times having to do the same and we only had sensitivities to foods, not even real allergies to them, you know, to gluten and, and to casein. Um, mm-hmm. but I saw huge improvements in, um, mm-hmm. in our children from removing some of those things that didn't serve their bodies as, yeah. you know, like my neighbors, <laughs> that's okay. You guys eat your stuff over here. We're going to stick with, but it, it's so interesting also that you said how isolate, how isolating it can be mm-hmm. when you are making different choices than your other family members or, um, you know, having things the same thing. We actually don't have um, family <laughs> that we go to at any time for anything. So poor DJ doesn't get a lot of um, experience around other family members because it just, it, we, it was relevant very early on in the beginning that the, they weren't going to be able to like help us and be supportive of us Mm -hmm. and our family's needs that we had just like yours. I mean, if you can't go to somewhere where you can be safe in the foods you're going to eat, uh, (laughs) that's so hard. I can't even imagine. Well, but as a, as a toddler, you know, they crawl around and they roll around and everything. And he had a a reaction once that I, um, uh, christening that we went to and so we're at a reception center and we think we're not sure but he like inhaled the peanut dust that must have been on the carpet because mm. you know he started like swelling in his eyes and everywhere and we think that's what it was but we have um we've not cut ourselves off from everyone in the family but some things have changed so like um my dad comes and visits here at my house so it's mm. easier I just 
you know, shell out the food on the table <laughs> and that's it. Um, and, and we adapt, like I, I bring meals now and my son, he's older now, so he can cope. Yeah. Um, actually very happily for us, uh, for the last about year and a half, he's been desensitized to his allergen. Mm-hmm. So we went through a process here uh, in Australia. It's called desensitization. There's like one guy who does it, one doctor. In America, it's called OIT. And um, it's a slightly different process in both countries. In in Australia, it's really customised to the patient um, because it's really extremely clever. I'll just Mm. really quickly tell everyone, uh, especially if you're in Sydney. Um, But um, you get – so – He's allergic to peanut, right? And the different pe- brands of peanut packets or peanut butter, um, they're grown in different farms. So they have uh, different countries maybe. So they have slightly different genetic um, makeup. So you're going to be like a little bit more, a little bit less allergic to the different ones. And that depends on your individual cells, right, and your skins. So in Australia, um, we start with um, – uh, raw peanuts that are boiled for two hours and that de- it's called denatures the protein. It makes it weaker. It, it, it rolls out the protein shape. So it's a different, um, slightly different physical shape and it's, it's, you're less sensitive to it kind of matches, but less. And we f- hopefully figure out like one that it's weak enough for him. So he went through first, um, uh, a round of vitamin D, uh, probiotics and, um, antioxidants for a few months to help heal his gut system then we started on these very weak um boiled peanuts like this is only under medical supervision you do not do this at home so we were he was tested he had a we had a range of 10 peanuts we found one that was boiled for two hours that was kind of like just okay the teeniest amount and we built up from that and then we went to the next one and the next one and then we started doing like peanut butters and then we went through about 16 different ones. Yeah. So he's now at the point where he's from, from um, he would have wheels of like that's the reaction on your skin. Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest one he had was 20 um, millimetres across and this was like when he was way down the track. Like we found these peanut um, protein milkshake powder, you know, and he was super reactive. It would have killed him on the spot if he'd ever had that. And now he's, um, we'll have to take him for another checkup, but I'm hoping <laughs> so far so good That's for last year and a half. He's safe. You know, he, wow. we still carry around his EpiPen, um, yeah. but he can eat like go to someone's place and eat some pizza or whatever, you know, not peanut stuff. So yeah. Share us some foods that would have peanuts in that we might not know. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Pet food. Not that you eat that, (laughs) but, um, you know, if, if you feed your dog with some pet food, I've heard that in the States they have it. And then your dog licks the child, especially on the face. Um, yeah, a um, uh, lot of like crackers and 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 cookies um, have traces. Uh, ice creams, um, dips, um, especially like something like hummus, but because they're all made on shared lines, you know, like your beetroot, mm-hmm. you know, one would have it as well. Um, sometimes rolled cheeses. You know how you have, have those like softer cheeses that are rolled. They'll have traces. So I'm I'm looking at traces of peanuts. Like I, it's not the big ones. It's like the possible like couple of atoms of peanuts. Yeah um wow what else would there be tomato sauce like ketchup um yeah yeah we had to avoid all the ketchups and except one brand um and like barbecue sauce as well (laughs) um wow yeah herbs and spices oh i had to buy 40 packets of cinnamon sticks because i saw like they'd brought in some new ones that suddenly had traces of nuts because they changed their manufacturing procedure. And I literally went to all these different supermarkets and bought all the old stock oh <laughs> so gosh. I would have enough yeah. and just ground them up at home as, as time passed. Wow. And um, so, yeah, it, it literally can be in everything. And if you um, like cook in one bowl with some contaminated um, foods or possibly contaminated, and then you just like tip that out and put, what you think is safe in there, it can be recontaminated. So through knives or chopping boards or bowls or whatever. So you have to be like really, really paranoid and, and very clean. 
<laughs> and just very, very careful, like hands, of course. So um, some people have been caught out by um, if you go to a cafe or restaurant and you have a something with peanuts on the shelf above what they think is safe food and it drips mm. down, um, you can't remove the allergen off, like you can't take cheese off a pizza or peanuts off a sure. thing and it's not safe, you know. Um, yeah, so stuff like that. <laughs> that is so informative. I appreciate that. I know that it wasn't quite our, our, uh, for where we were going, but I love that. I love that you brought that information because who knows that unless you've been through that and had that experience, that's like some information that you just don't have with you in your daily life. If you don't suffer from a food allergy, right? So oh. You get to be a really good detective <laughs> and, and you bring up people and you say, is this like on a shared line? Oh, another one is like um, pulses. Pulses are often um, processed in the same factory as nuts. So um, they'll have like may contain warnings on them um, in Australia. <laughs> I can say that. So I'm not sure that I think the law differs in the U.S. depending on which state you're in on the may contain laws. Yeah, but um, I, I would bring up. Yeah. That is really great advice for, for moms or dads, you know, grandparents, anybody who, who is struggling with anything like that. Let's jump back into your book and talk about uh, how fun. Now, the, the, you said it's kind of like an adventure. Um, what age group is the book best for? So um, it's from kindy to year six. So from about, um, if you're a good reader in grade two, uh, like towards the end of grade two, you could probably read it independently. But otherwise, um, from grade three to six, you could read independently. And then from K to two, read with your parents. So um, either out loud or, um, you know, take turns, however you like to read. And one of the, um, so it's a game book, which Mm. to just explain the structure is in general, you read uh, the story down one or maybe two pages. And then the reader comes to a couple of questions. What do you do? Do you turn left and escape or do you turn right and fight the monster and then depending on the plot choice you take you get directed to page seven or page 48 and then the story continues along a different path so um you know with these game books and with mine like it has 22 different endings so about half you survive (laughs) and about half you don't (laughs) and um, they're they're generally um uh, like it's an art-based adventure. So it's got like uh, you get sucked into Mona Lisa's painting and she tries to like mash you because you don't want to stay with her forever and now. <laughs> or, <laughs> or you um, uh, fly through the Starry Night, you know, Van Gogh's Starry Night painting and then you decide, oh, do you, he tells you to stop. Do you escape him or do you go with him and different things happen? Mm-hmm. Or um, uh, there's like there are, chairs like uh, art chairs that's student works and they come to life and they do different things so um uh they chase you one of them eats you flushes down the toilet there's a big um class kung fu battle scene <laughs> so with the one page with the, with the game book structure um it, one of the great things about it i mean I, I just wrote it this way because i just love these kind of books but um for kids who find dif- um, reading difficult or a bit of a chore you can just read down one page. It's like they're short chunks of reading, so it's not like overbearing, and they're they're quick with um, uh, 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 like with the questions. So you can take charge more often. Your interest doesn't fade away. So it gets those reluctant readers. Um, I hope like more interested in reading the story and with their teachers in there, like I don't know what primary school child is not like completely obsessed about their teachers and their school. Like when my kids were little, I literally, they would download like dump on me, like dump in the nice way, but four hours at least of what happened at school (laughs) in in, like real time detail almost. So yeah. um, yeah, the teachers are there like in the Kung Fu battle and traveling yeah. through like the different storylines, getting eaten by monsters, sometimes getting spat up by <laughs> the monster again. So um, it's for for schools that like are a little bit out of the box, you know, yeah. that have a little bit of fun in them. And um, it's, yeah, but it's, it's really like, 
parents and the kids love it because it's about their teachers and they're on this big adventure in their school. <laughs> and so how do you personalize them? Yeah, so they're actually customized to the schools, not the kids. So each school gets the same book as a set. Yeah. So I have got this massive document and all the fields are in there. And when the school is ready to order, I get all of their details wow. and I plop them in the story. And then I get them Off printed. To the Yep, at Amazon. So I can sell them to the US. I, um, I get printed in 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 the one of the one of the many Amazon facilities. I'm, I'm pointing over there because yeah. you're over there. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> one of the Amazon facilities in the US, and then they just ship it straight to the school. So it's actually really quick. Like um, I say, three weeks for the US, but wow. probably would get there in two. So. Um, except if you're really remote, then it takes longer, but it's, it's, yeah, it's less, um, you know, fuel miles because it's printed, you know, reasonably locally. And, um, I've always seen, uh, Amazon ship in just cardboard and plastic or recyclable plastic. Did I just say plastic? Yeah. Cardboard and paper or, or recyclable pa- plastic, but more recently it's just all, all cardboard and paper. So yeah. there's no waste. There's no, um, you um oh yeah and for schools as well no startup costs um it's a pre-sale so you just get your students interested yes. uh they pay the school uh, the school collects all the money up front they keep the profit you don't need to spend it on certain things like wow. some other fundraisers make you and it's it's a very flat um equity fundraiser I think because I have as a parent (laughs) I have and um you know we were struggling a little bit financially when my kids were in primary in particular and those fundraisers where you're um asked individually for sponsorship and then you have some kids who like raise you know four five six hundred eight hundred dollars and they get these massive prizes and then if you have like either no family no extended family to ask or you're not in a great financial situation then you get like a sticker you know yeah. and it's not it's not fun it's not fun for anyone so i'm for the flat <laughs> flat yeah. fundraiser. i love that um, one other thing if i'm allowed to mention it Please. um, <laughs> um I, I'm really uh, because I I have I've worked for or volunteered for several years on the PNC and I really value the time that parents put into like trying to raise um, money for their schools and it's a lot of work and it's it's worthwhile and you can make great friends as well but it's a lot of work so um, one thing I've done oh actually I'll just grab a different book here. In this book, because I want schools to be able to raise as much money as possible yeah. and get the right book out. So in the uh, you have you got the schools have an option of adding community sponsorship to the books. So if I can just show you, yeah. in the first you can have four free pages and you can ask for donations from businesses in your local community. Oh, that's um so like smart. that. And I just print them in and this school, this school here, they raised um, two thousand dollars from selling the books and four and a half thousand dollars from the community sponsorship. So, wow. with one person organizing this in just a few hours, yeah. so it's a great value for money fundraiser. And um, you can ask anybody you think is willing to donate, including your local councils or your high schools that might be interested in aligning with reader, readers and reading and, a, and an ethical product. So it can be, it's up to you totally, like to, up to schools totally how they'd like to work it. Wow. You could also have a raffle if you wanted to decide the teacher characters uh, or a, um, I call it a coin drop. I don't have a good word for this, but you get like, um, ask six teachers to vie for the roles of the four teacher character roles yeah. and you get like a, a bucket with their photo on it and people drop their loose yeah, chain. And I like the, that. the teacher that has the most money is the main character and then second one gets second position, etc. So that can be like an extra way of doing it if you if, if you feel like Great it. Ideas. So it's got potential, you know. Oh, I love it. And I'm so excited to share this. I'm going to share this in a whole bunch oh, of Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you better be ready. <laughs> Yay. Well, oh man, it's been so much fun to talk to you, to get to know you. And 
Um, thank you for sharing your story and the, you know, the vulnerable side of it and sharing tips and information for working so hard on this wonderful book for, um, not even just for yourself. These are for the community. This is like you said, building communities. Um, so really fabulous job just cheers a hundred percent. I hope that we can stay in touch. I really had a great time getting to know you. Tell us where we can go to find, do you have a website? Um, like you said, <laughs> the, where can we go to find all this good stuff? Well, thank you so much. I do. Um, my business is called my school adventure. So the website is myschooladventure.com. And um, you can also drop me an email at hello at myschooladventure.com. And, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on Pinterest at My School Adventure Books. Um, they're my main ones. I've, I've, yeah, I don't really do Instagram, but I should probably, but no. I <laughs> was saying that for and... a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. I'm too old. <laughs> I know. I'm inviting you to a couple of groups to be a part of with me and then Oh, we're working we're working on it with our same aged women to get better at <laughs> these things and together we can do it <laughs> thank you and and also if um you do go along there you can ask for a free sample book um for your school yes and i just post it out to you yeah oh mm-hmm. i love that well i hope to get our school involved i think that that would be so much fun like i'm going to definitely give information um to to our school that my child goes to a charter school and i think it's it's a great way to give them idea of a great fundraiser to have that doesn't involve like you said food and putting any kind of kids at risk so thank you so much for coming up with such a wonderful idea Oh, SJ, thank you. That's really kind. I'm so (laughs) glad. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. And um, apart from the a couple technical difficulties, uh, it was uh, really great. And I I hope that you have a wonderful day. Oh, thank you, SJ. I've had so much fun. It's been really, really nice. Thank you for for that. Yeah, thanks for being here. And we'll talk to you soon. 